Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another video. In this one, I'll be sculpting the Grim Reaper. Alright, so long story short, I've been seeing a lot of comments from people asking for the Grim Reaper. Asking for me to sculpt the Grim Reaper, not for the Grim Reaper to show up at their house or anything. Anyway, so I saw your comments and I delivered. I hope you like it. Let's start the video. Alright, for the first step here, I'm creating the armature for the Grim Reaper and I'm using 12 gauge aluminum wire. And here I'm just shaping out the shape of the torso, and because he's going to have a robe and not two individual legs, I can just twist the ends of the wire together to do that. And then I added another piece for the arms and attached it with masking tape, and now I am bulking out the bottom half of the robes with aluminum foil. And I did have a pretty good plan in my head for this guy. I knew that I wanted him to be very stylized and have certain parts be exaggerated with areas that are really wide contrasted by parts that are really skinny kind of like a Tim Burton style character and uh, you'll see what I mean as we get further along here now that the base armature is complete here I am adding my polymer clay super sculpy to be exact and then all of the materials that I use in this video and every video are listed below in the description along with my affiliate links to purchase them all right, getting this thing almost completely covered and I'm just smoothing everything out with my fingers. Like that. And then as you can see, um, I've been getting really lucky with the clay that I've been getting lately because it's been so fresh and there's nothing better than getting a fresh box of clay because I can't stand conditioning hard clay. It's probably my least favorite thing to do. All right, now that everything is covered and pretty smooth for the most part, it's time to start creating some wrinkles for the Grim Reaper's robes. And to make those, I just rolled out a little snake here that tapers at the end, and I'm adding it to the piece and then blending the edges in with the rest of the sculpture. Like that, and then I just repeat this process over and over and over again until I have all the wrinkles that I want. And then as you can see, I'm just jumping between some ball styluses and rubber tools. Um, all of the tools that I'm using too, those are listed below as well along with the link. So if you want to check those out. When I'm making these wrinkles, I'm not just randomly placing pieces everywhere and hoping it looks right. I'm thinking of gravity and how stiff fabric would fall. So there is a little bit of a system to it, but it's hard to explain because I'm just kind of pulling it out of my head and it just seems to work. But I mean, I just put the first piece down and play off that one with the others and place them in an aesthetically pleasing way that makes sense. And now I'm just nitpicking a couple things before moving on to the next section. For the wrinkles on his back, I want them to drape nicely and look like they're pulling around the shape of his shoulders and back. And then I'm jumping between using my fingers and ball styluses to finish off these wrinkles. When I use the styluses, I'm rolling the ball tip on the surface. I'm not dragging it. I want to create an impression in the clay, not pull the clay to a different area. And like I mentioned before, I'm making this guy because of your comments. So if there's something that you want to see me make, leave a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your ideas and I'm down for anything within reason. <laughs> I'm just finishing up the ropes here and seriously I'm loving every minute of sculpting this thing. I love being able to run with an idea like this. And now it's time to make the head. To start I'm balling up a piece of aluminum foil and I will be using extra firm Super Sculpey for this and a couple other parts. And the reason I'm using extra firm as opposed to my regular Super Sculpey is because like I mentioned before my clay is really fresh which can make it hard to work with because it's really easy to accidentally smash 
parts of it and I didn't feel like leaching it so I figured going with extra firm would eliminate this problem right off the bat. And believe it or not this is only the second time that I've used extra firm in my life. The first time I didn't even finish the project but the reason I haven't used it sooner is because the first time I bought it, the clay was so impossibly hard, it was ridiculous conditioning it, and I thought all of it was like this, so I just never bought it again. But then just recently, I was curious and I felt a block of it at the store, and it was just so much softer and more manageable, so I picked it up. And I'm actually really glad that I used it for this because I really like working with it. It is so easy to manipulate once you have it conditioned, and the gray color makes it so easy to see details. I will definitely be using this more in the future for sure. Now I'm just shaping out the mandible here with my fingers and then I'm going to place it onto the rest of the skull to see how it looks and kind of shape it out a little bit. Right now before I permanently attach the mandible I want to widen this area a little bit by adding just a little bit of clay and blending that in. And then I'm just shaping out the jaw a little bit before I attach it for the last time. And then once that's on there, I am just creating a nice little nasal bone here with a small ball of clay, blending it with my spoon tool and then adding some final details to it and finishing it off with a color shaper. Now using a dental tool, I am creating the shape of the teeth like this, all of the vertical lines across the front, on the top and the bottom, and then using a very, very small dotting tool to create the arch on top of each tooth. And then I'm using a color shaper to create little indents in between the teeth, and it's looking pretty good. All right, now it's time to make the hands. Because these are skeleton hands and there is no flesh on them, I do have to create armature for each of the fingers. To do this, I'm using some floral wire here that I am twisting together for each finger, and then I um, bundle them all together and gather it at the bottom and apply the clay over that. And then I decided to give him four fingers on each hand just to go with the style of the figurine that I'm going for. And I want them to be a little inspired by Jack Skellington's hands from The Nightmare Before Christmas. And then here I am putting all of the fingers together and wrapping them up like that at the bottom. And I probably could have added the thumb at this point too, but I didn't. I do in the second hand. This was the first one, so I get a little faster with the second one. And now that the hand armature is done, it's time to start adding the clay. This is not my favorite thing to do in the world, but you gotta do it. So I just rolled out a nice little snake there and I'm just wrapping it around each finger like so. And then bending the hand into the position I want before I add the clay because if you bend it after you add the clay, you're gonna just smash the clay all over the place and it's not gonna look right. So just bend it first and then add the clay to it. And then to detail the hands after the clay has been applied to the armature, I am using a couple different tools, including my dental tool, of course, and some color shapers. And I'm just detailing those until I get them to a point that I like. And now it's time to create the Grim Reaper's scythe that is the weapon that he's always shown holding. And to make this, I'm just shaping out a piece of that 12 gauge aluminum wire again and adding clay to it. And I want this to be a very organic looking scythe, I guess, make it, make it look kind of handmade, like it was carved or if it, like a tree branch or something. So to get that effect, I bent the wire in a couple different directions and now I am carving off some of the clay with an exacto knife like this and this was a really fun process i really enjoyed doing this and i'm just kind of overlapping the cuts all over the place 
and it ends up looking really cool and I'm really happy with how this turns out. And then look at that satisfying cleanup. All right, now it's time to create the blade. And to get that piece of clay, I just put a snake through my pasta maker and I am just folding it over the piece of wire at the top that I saved for the blade, obviously. Now, once I have that folded over, I added a little bit of bacon bond just to reinforce the connection of the clay to itself. And I just cut out the shape of the blade that I wanted and I'm just shaping everything out with my fingers. Now I'm sharpening the blade with my X-Acto knife, giving it a nice angled edge on both sides. Nice little bevel. And it's looking pretty cool. This was a lot easier to make than I thought it was going to be. All right, now just making a couple notches here. Like that, just rocking my X-Acto knife back and forth. Adding some final details. And then using some clay softener to remove fingerprints. My dental tool to add a couple cracks. Now it's ready for the oven to be pre-baked. All right, now it's time to attach the head to the body. And to do that, I pre-baked the head with the scythe earlier and I'm just, I added a skewer to the back of it before I stuck it in the oven. And now I'm just adding some clay for the neck here and attaching it with some bacon bond in the hole that I made with the skewer. And now it's time to make the hood. This was really hard to do. I don't know why, but it just was. And I go through so many different like variations of a hood for this guy. It's, it's, I mean, it looks funny now, but when I was doing it, it was really frustrating, but it's all good. We arrived at a spot that's, that's good. So can't be mad forever. All right. So this is the part where I decide to give his hood a really long exaggerated point and I really like how this turned out um it was a little hard making it not look like a witch hat but I do figure it out and I'm really happy with how it looks so here I'm still just kind of messing around with it like I know that I like this point but I don't know how to make it work yet so I'm just experimenting I took a couple breaks in between ideas here too but we're getting there. It's starting to look like something. And this, I think this is the final one that I do. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there we go. Now we're just elongating the front of it there, shaping everything out. And now I'm finally happy, I think. No, I'm finally happy after I had that piece. Now I can see it. And then I did make it a little curly cue at the end there that but i ended up changing it because i just thought it was too much so i just unrolled it like that we're just texturizing the inside of the hood and then adding some wrinkles all over the place like that and then to create these wrinkles it's the same process that i've used for the rest of the figurine just being a little bit more gentle so that i don't smash the hood that I just worked so hard on. And then this tool that I'm using, that's a ball stylus at one end. It is, it's, I think it's a color shaper. I'm not sure exactly what they call it but it's, it's like a really firm color shaper. So when you're blending with it, it creates the same sort of blend that your finger would, if that makes sense. So it works really well, it's super effective, and I always love using it, especially for creating a fabric texture. Now it's time for sleeves. I want these things to be very exaggerated. I want them to be pretty much dragging on the ground beside him. So to make them, I am of course reinforcing them with aluminum foil and it's a very thin piece of foil. I do fold it over a little bit at the edges just to get it into the shape that I want. So 
that works out pretty well for that. You can't just use a piece of clay without anything underneath it or else it'll probably crack or be extremely fragile. So then I just added some clay over that for my pasta maker and then adding some more wrinkles. There are so many wrinkles to sculpt on this guy, but I loved every second of it. And then when I did the reverse side on the sleeves, it did smash the other side a little bit. So I just go in there with my large ball stylus and fix everything essentially. Now I'm just adding them to my arm armature on the figurine after attaching the hands. And to attach the sleeves, I just literally just folded over the top of them and blended it in with the other side. And it worked really well, I was really surprised. And then I'm just positioning them how I want. And now it's time to finish off the arms. So to make that, I just rolled out a piece of clay here and I put a slit down the middle of it, but I didn't go all the way through just so I can add that this around the wire easily and then just blend it. This works really well. I don't know why I don't use this method more often. And then finishing up the other arm, and we're good to go. Now I'm just adding some final wrinkles to the sleeves, being very careful not to smash the work that I've already completed on either side. Going in there, refining everything as much as possible before the last step, which is to add a little bit of texture to all of the fabric. And then to create that texture, I am just rolling the gripper portion of one of my stainless steel tools all over the surface. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just want to get the point across. And then before I bake him, I want to brush the entire surface with some clay softener. This does a great job of removing fingerprints, and you can also use baby oil. He's ready for the oven. And then once he's baked and hardened, it's time to paint him. And now I'm going to start with his skull and hands. I want to paint these an ivory color. I don't want them to be pure white. To create this color, I mixed brown, white, yellow, and black. Now once my third or fourth coat is completely dry, it's time to go in there with some shadows. To create this brown color, I just added some more brown to the ivory color. For highlights and shadows, I always like to build off the initial color or colors that I started with. This helps to create shades that I know are gonna work with each other and I'm not adding a foreign color that's gonna throw everything off. It also allows me more control over the intensity of the color contrast. Now I am outlining all of the individual teeth with a darker brown. This brown was created by adding more brown to my initial color and just adding a couple little highlights to each tooth. He's looking good, detailing the hands, finishing those up, getting ready for the black robes. Oh, actually, nope, we're doing the eyes first. So do the eyes very slowly, trying to get perfect circles. Glad I was able to do this on the first try. It's not fun painting white over black if you mess up black. All right, now we're going in here with a very fine brush to get the black areas around the skull and then going in with the bigger brush of course to finish the rest of it. Really now it's time to paint the scythe. I am starting with a dark brown that I am then going to go over with a Nice dry brushing of light brown, just to bring out those details. And then because I want the blade to be silver, I'm going to paint it black first. And I always paint my metallic areas black first just because it gives the metallic paint more of a color shift. And now I'm going over all the robes with some light gray to just highlight those details 
and to create this gray I mixed of course black and white together but I also added some brown because normally when I just mix black and white together I get a little bit of a blue undertone and I don't want that so to counteract that I added the brown and I'm just getting lighter and lighter with every coat and stopping before I take it too far and then to attach the scythe I just glue it to his hand and the bottom of his robes with some E6000 industrial adhesive and he's done I am so happy with how this guy turned out let me know what you think in the comments And that's a wrap. I really hope you like the Grim Reaper. Thank you so much for requesting him. It was so much fun to make. If you have an idea for a sculpture that you want to see me make next, leave a comment down below. If I get enough requests for the same thing, I'll probably do it. Or maybe one day I'll just select a comment at random. Who knows? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. The awesome soundtrack for this video was created custom by Tiff Music. He's a really cool guy and he does awesome work. I will link his YouTube channel and his Patreon down below, so be sure to check that out. As always, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. If you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ace of Clay, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.